guess where I am guys? I'm only sat here with my very own dragon, Sarah Davis, and I'm at HQ in a Crafter's Companion in the Northeast. Can't believe I'm actually here, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, what does it feel like to have having bagged yourself a dragon? Oh, is what well, I always hear. Well, it feels phenomenal to finally meet you actually, Sarah, because so far, We've kept in touch on email, we've had WhatsApps and we've, we've had Zooms, but to have the opportunity to actually visit today, meet the team, everything you do here is absolutely mind-blowing and it's just so exciting to be part of something that's just so extraordinary. Yeah, no, it's Helen, Helen literally walked through the door and I said, oh, let me show you around, Helen, you can meet your extended family now and her, and her eyes were just on sticks. Uh, yeah, She's yeah. like, what? And I was like, yeah, come on, this is the social media extension team and he's the product designers and, you know, basically you've got loads more people to work with now. Oh, it's just so exciting and everybody here is so friendly and yeah, we just can't wait to see where this is going to go next. It's been so, so recent since we were actually on air. Um, but since then, the, the response has been absolutely awesome. Uh, it was such an exciting thing, the whole build-up, the whole event of, of the evening of it, and then the aftermath. And uh, everybody's support has been absolutely brilliant and so she far. she was so nervous. I mean, I, I literally remember speaking to Helen <laughs> uh, a few days before, and, and she's like, oh, I, I don't know what it's going to look like. And I, I guess it must, in your head, it, it felt one way. Is yeah. that when you actually watched it on the screen, is yeah. it how you remembered it? Because obviously I knew what the outcome was, which I knew was absolutely amazing. <laughs> um, but you never really know how things are going to be edited together. And when you're on Dragon's Den, as you know, you're in there for a long time. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realise that, you yeah. know. They think it's about the 12 minutes that we've got. The, the 12 minutes that people see, that can yeah. be up to two hours. Yeah. We can be in grilling an entrepreneur. Yeah, for yeah one of absolutely. The better words. And uh, I, I felt as though, you know, I was in there for a period of time. Um, some of the questions were grueling, and it is a warts and all situation. You really do have to bear your soul. And as a result, you, you really don't know how that's going to be edited, how that's going to come across, whether people are going to um, like your product, um, or whether you're going to get any, uh, you know, anything on social media that isn't so nice um, but the opposite happened and when we watched it um, it was just awesome because we had an actual watch party I know I'm, I'm oh, so good word. I couldn't be there <laughs> oh. so yes the who, who was at the watch party then? Uh, the watch party was just full of my friends my family and a lot of my extended team as well yeah. because a lot of my business is um, sourced um, locally around the, the northwest where I live. So um, we had our graphic designer, our videographer, my business coach, uh, social media people. So it was just great to bring everybody together. And when you made that offer, Sarah, I'm not joking, <laughs> it was like we were at a football match. So did, did the people in the room not know what the outcome was? <laughs> the majority didn't because I kept it. You know, wow. you, must, you must come along, you, you know, so, so it was a real good get together. It was a real feel good experience. Yeah. Um, the room went off, everyone was cheering. And uh, yeah, that was the start of a, of a great night after that. And um, we just celebrated then. And then we could just start seeing the, uh, the sales coming in, the new sales. So yeah. it's just absolutely awesome. So come on then. So before you went in the den, did you have any preconceived ideas of which dragon you wanted? And, and I'm not going to be offended if you don't say that to me, because I know Uncle Tuka <laughs> likes to tell everyone I'm in the baby world, you know. Yeah, well, um, Tuka was the person I thought was the right dragon for me, mm -hmm. but it won't be the first time I've been wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry, we'll be absolutely rinsing him for all of the contacts. As soon as we need any introductions anyway, we'll be asking him. Yeah. Um, working with you since we, we've started, I, I can tell that we're just going to gel so well. It's easy and it's just the best result for Easy Tots. We're so glad to have you on board. I think what, what you know, business for me, it, it's all about people. Yeah, it You know, is. it doesn't matter. It, it, there's, every business has the same challenges. Yeah. No matter whether they're a service or a product business, what sector they're in, what size they are, you go through the same challenges. Exactly. And, and for me, what it was is, you came in and you were so enthusiastic and had such belief in your product. I just, 
to me, you, you could have been selling me anything because you were what I bought into in the den there. The, the fact that the product was awesome was just a bonus to me. I always say, when people ask me about Dragonstone, I always say, a fantastic entrepreneur can carry a mediocre pr a product, but you can't have a phenomenal product and a mediocre entrepreneur. And when you find a one where you get both a phenomenal entrepreneur and a fantastic product, you've just hit the jackpot. And I, and I feel like that's what we've done here. Oh, wow, I feel really <laughs> That is such lovely feedback back because sometimes when you do work alone you don't always recognize how far you've come so uh, going through this experience has, um, has enabled me to give myself a little bit of a pat on the back and say look this is where we've taken it so far people believe in you Sarah believes in us and I know where we can take it next yeah so. it, honestly what it was for me is I mean my, my kids now are four and seven so it feels like an eternity ago but my niece as you'll have seen with my little videos yep, of my niece is is exactly at that stage you know she's just been through weaning and we have the food everywhere and it just as I was sitting there in the den and, and you know we had the we had our Ikea mat uh, yeah. and I had and we were trying it and I'm thinking and couldn't get it up I remember this I remember the exact the problem. problem and then I know what that community's like if if you are out somewhere and someone's got a solution to a problem that yeah. every mum's facing we're all that oh, phones are out how need can it. we order one yeah love and that's it. exactly this brilliant and you know the support that we've had from um on our social media they are very very much part of our journey um I feel like we couldn't have done um any more with them you know the support that they've given us on the build-up they were right behind us with their easy tots flags and um, and all, all the way through the airing so we put to them any questions that they would like to ask yourself yes. or I so mm -hmm. I do have some questions if you Come be on. happy to answer them I am happy to bear all okay. you ask me whatever you want to know okay okay this is from mama to Isabella right and she wants to know Sarah where do you see easy tots in five years time Oh, what a great question. Honestly, I think I think this is just the beginning. And what you've done really, really well is you've built a brand and a following. And the one thing is, and you see this out on social media, mums want to see other mums doing well. They yeah. want to support and help yeah. each other along yeah. the way. Yeah. So to me, if I can just give you the support with your marketing, the extended team, the manufacturing and everything, I have no doubt you've got a head full of magic and even if you don't, everybody out there will have a head full of magic <laughs> with all the things that they want to see you to develop. I mean, we've already been having some chats today about different product ideas and yeah. how you, where you could take this. Yeah. It might be that you need some help and support finding other manufacturers or engineers. All of that is just... That's the enjoyable bit to me. I'm a product person. Yeah. I love... I, I can't wait to get into the thick of the product with you. And honestly, well... People are always going to be having babies. There's always going to be exactly. huge demand for your product. It's just onwards and upwards. 100 percent Well, I'll take all of that, please. <laughs> <laughs> what a fabulous answer. Thank you. Okay, this is an interesting one from uh, Raising Laney. Sarah, how do you find balancing spending the time with your family, the time that you've got to commit to Dragon's Den, and running your own business all at the same time? I get asked that one a lot mm -hmm. and it's hard because it's like different buckets yeah so there's the mum sarah bucket yeah there's the sarah running the business bucket and then dragon's den for me it's like i only ever had those two buckets and dragon's den it's not work but it's not my family time yeah so i find like i have to just find extra time out of nowhere to to do all the dragon's den stuff as yeah. well yeah which it's i phenomenal. love it's like my husband calls it my very expensive hobby. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but, but it's the side that I love. But what I've found is, you know, the, the, the biggest thing that I think kills all working mothers is mum guilt. You can't yeah. be everywhere all the time. You can't be yeah. all things to all people. So I always say, focus on whatever you're doing. Yeah. So for me, it was, you know, if I'm on a plane flying out to America and I have to go and do three days and I'm away from the kids, yeah. Yes, it was devastating leaving the kids behind, crying at the door, clinging onto my legs or whatever, but there's no point sitting on the plane crying, yeah. feeling sorry for myself for that whole 10-hour yeah, flight. I might as well spend the time prepping my show, yeah. getting ready for my meetings, catching up on my work emails, be in that moment, because there's yeah. one thing's for sure, when I land back the other side of this, yeah. it's mum time. You know, work Sarah has just worked really hard for them few days. Yeah. Mum Sarah is on duty now, and we're not trying to be a little bit of both, we're then being the mum. So what you're saying is it's a mindset thing, isn't it? It's yeah. like be present in, in be present, be present in what, in what you're, what you're doing. doing. And don't 
kick yourself for what you're not yeah, doing. Yeah, Go, focus on the negatives, focus on the positives. That is so important because uh, we do beat ourselves up a lot. Um, I work all the hours and um, yeah, sometimes it, 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 you know, it's, it's a necessary evil. Yeah. But um, that's fabulous advice, that's absolutely brilliant. Okay, what have we got next? Um, okay, Highland Sense wants to know, what made you join Dragon's Den? So, you'll all get this one, <laughs> people with kids, okay? Right, so I've done quite a bit of investing over the years. So I've invested, I was part of an all-female investment group called Gabriel Investors, and, um, and I really loved investing in other businesses. And I think the best way I can describe it is, most people who are entrepreneurs like to build businesses and so a lot of people build them exit them move on to the next one or whatever well crafters companions my baby yeah. i love it so dearly yeah. i can't see me doing anything else yeah but that doesn't mean that there's that itch inside me that wants to go and build other businesses yeah, yeah. but the problem is i don't have enough appetite to go and start i don't have enough bandwidth to start loads of other businesses from scratch so what i found was investing kind of gave me the opportunity for the half warehouse yeah. so it's like having a baby right so my sister's got a baby it's wonderful i come around and play <laughs> with her i do all the fun stuff and then at bedtime i go home and i have a great night's uninterrupted yeah. sleep and she's the one who's up with the baby all night having so that worry. So it is worry. the best of both worlds, it's isn't the, it's, it? It's it like works. being an auntie. Being an investor is yeah. like being an auntie. And that's the best way I can describe it. And is it fun for you? Oh, because it's it. quite a gruelling schedule, isn't it? Oh, I absolutely love it. I mean, look at this. It, to me, being able to spend just a few hours with you today and hear how all the exciting stuff that's happening in your business, I get as much of a buzz from that as the stuff happening in my business. And then if I can download a load of my ideas and send you off with a head full of magic yeah. to do a load of yeah. other stuff, I get a real kick out of that as well. And it's, so, like I said, it's an expensive hobby. It, it, well, it's, it's a great hobby. I think we should all have a hobby similar to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and we've got, everybody knows that you love a gin. Oh, I do love a gin. So what is your favourite gin? So, do you know what? I'm on that Craft Gin Club subscription at the moment. Oh, yeah. Sarah Whittingham, one of the other dragons, oh, invested yeah. in that in the den. And so she set me up a subscription. So I'm getting a new favourite gin every month. <laughs> but I have to say, I do like the flavoured stuff. Yes, you know, like, the, like a rhubarb flavoured or whatever. Do you like a nice flavoured gin? Very nice. And lastly, um, this was posed to both of us, but I think this is mostly suitable for you. What was the single most important decision you made that contributed towards your success? And that's from Carol Ann Prescott. Oh, the single most important decision. decision. That's a really it's challenging a, it's one. It's a tough one because there's multiple things at different stages, isn't there? There is. I think it's that initial leap of faith that yeah. anyone takes. And yeah. the thing is for me, I was really lucky. And I think it, I don't like to use the word luck in business a lot, but I do feel like I was lucky in that I was able to take that leap of faith when I was at university. Yeah. So it's before incredible. I had a mortgage, a family, yeah. uh, you know, any responsibilities yeah. like that, um, which meant I could throw my all into the business mm -hmm. and not have to compromise because I know what those early days are like, yeah. the sleepless nights, yeah. the 18 hour days, you know, yeah. and, and I was able to do all of that when I was in a, a space in my life that I wasn't having to compromise anybody else, the family or whatever, to do that. Yeah. So I think for me, it was it was being able to take that leap of faith really early on. How about for, how about for you? What was the most important bit for you? Um, I think I think for me, there's been different stages. I agree with you that it is that initial leap of faith and committing to, yeah. and you know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to give it my all. So um, I very first started in business in my mid twenties. And um, at the time I had a career in education and I had, you know, my degrees and all of those things and my career plan was mapped out. But I decided I wanted to um, run my own business and it was going to be in commercial window cleaning. Didn't know a thing about commercial window cleaning at the time, but went away, did it, grew that business to, you know, we employed up to 18 people and that was over a period of 10 years. But I left my career in order to take that okay. business, get that. And, and the same thing happened when I started this business is I had to leave my previous business behind yeah. because there wasn't enough of me to go around. And you know what? I remember grilling you about that exact thing in the den. And it was that which was a big contributor in me making the decision of, yes, you're someone I want to invest in. Fabulous. Because like I said before, skills are transferable in business. All businesses yeah. have the same challenges. Yeah. You'd proven that you'd made a success out of one business. Mm -hmm. You were just moving on to the next challenge. Yeah. Yeah. And you just needed some support in, in taking yeah. that next step. 
and moving from, from services to products was a, a giant leap yep. and um, I wasn't necessarily prepared for how many challenges I was going to face and there were many times where I was thinking, have I made the right decision here? You know, I, I've definitely not got as much disposable money as I would like <laughs> <laughs> and there are times where, you know, you, you start to question yourself. But I think resilience is the most important thing. If you know you have got something that people need and people want, then you've got to find a way to make, to it, make it work. So I think we've got Brilliant. some questions for me. Come Ed, on then, let, so. me, uh, let me have the questions for you. So next question is from Mammy's Restaurant. So Mammy's Restaurant's asking, what really happens behind the scenes on Dragon's Den and how hard was the application process? Uh, okay, well, I'll start with the application process. That is easy. You just download an application form from the BBC website, fill it out, send it off and forget all about it. That yep. bit's done. Um, the, the, the best part is when you get the call as a result of that and for me that was about six months later after my application um, and it's one of those calls that it, it, it came up as a withheld number and you're like uh, do I answer it or not because yep. normally sales call but um, I answered it and it was fabulous to get that initial interview over the phone which was happening yep. literally there and then. Um, the producer said he was happy with um, how I came across in my interview and would we come in for an audition in just five days time and, and by the way can you um, bring a baby <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, yeah of course yeah of course I don't have a baby of my own anymore because but I will, acquire one I will in definitely five days. find a baby for this opportunity so thankfully my uh, my friend Mandy she had an 11 month old at the time she was still off on, on maternity leave so um, so we, we, we traipsed along to, to the studios and we did our pitch as I imagined I would do it in real life which was very different than when it actually came to fruition <laughs> and uh, so back, but backstage in the actual Dragon's Den we, you, you're told to arrive at X time and for some reason you think oh yeah I'm going to be done and dusted in a couple of hours <laughs> no <laughs> and we were right in the middle of Covid so um, the, my, my guests who I was bringing along with me which was my friend Lindsay and her both of her twins um, so if one baby wasn't in the best of moods we had options um, we were in separate de dressing rooms all day um, we were very very well looked after but every time the door knocks, you think, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. It's not, it's just for another little bit of filming or to touch your makeup. So what up. time in the day were you on? What time was your pitch? So we arrived at 12 and I pitched at 7 p.m. So those babies had been around in a dressing room all day. They were so good. Oh. But our biggest fear was um, poor Ollie was being fed lunch at his bedtime. <laughs> oh, yeah. So there was kind of some risks about whether he was going to just be fast asleep. Do you know, but I can't believe they put the baby pitch on last in the day. <laughs> Producers, hey. <laughs> <laughs> but hey ho, he, he was an absolute diamond all the way through and uh, I think they stole the show. So, uh, so yeah, but backstage at Dragon's Den, is, uh, it, it was a great experience. We don't get to meet anybody. When you not walk... even meet, we don't get to see. No. We literally don't get to see it. You, I don't know if you realise, all the entrepreneurs come in one entrance, the dragons have to come in another entrance, really? and all of the students, they're basically cordoned off, right. so that we can't get through to your area, you can't get yeah. through to ours, yeah, so we this, know nothing this... until those lift doors open and you walk out. I know, and I think that's what's... Uh... I just remember walking out and, and thinking, is my set is my set okay? Because you put that much effort into how things are going to look and is everything in the right place? And um, so when you walk out and you just see the, the, the five dragons, which were spaced out further than usual. So for me, I felt like when you were talking, it was like um, play, watching tennis <laughs> because you, to span, span the room like that. But I do always remember how smiley and welcoming you were. So you were kind of my go-to person for eye contact because you need that reassurance well, when you're you doing find that. If you're ever pitching to a room of people, you look for the smiley one in the room yeah. and you just focus <laughs> on them and zone everybody else yeah. out. I've done it so many times and I always think, do you know what? 
I'm going to be that one. When they walk through the lift, and you did really well. Some people, we get the shake, and when they come out, well, and the sweat I was inside. off the forehead. <laughs> and, yeah, and I just try and be the smiley one to put them in. Because at the end of the day, we're there because we want yeah. to make investments. Amazing. So we want to make you perform better. Amazing. So brilliant. Right, Thank let's have a look what we've got next. So, um, I don't know if we can ask. I don't know if we can ask. Hey, I'll try and ask it. I don't know if she'll answer this one. So this is actually loads of people have asked this. So um, Helen, what's your new product likely to be? And are there any new colours coming out? So we don't want to spoil any surprises on new releases, but I can uh, confirm that we have just signed off on a brand new product, two prototypes later. Um, I'm, I'm so excited about it. But I can't tell you what it is yet because that will ruin the <laughs> fabulous surprise. Probably be in stock in it in a couple of months. But what I can confirm is that we are planning to put some really nice weaning sets together that are going to be boxed and ready. They'll be perfect for gifting. I was just going to say first birthday giftables. Perfect for perfect. anything like that, baby showers, that kind of thing. And we are 100% looking at new colours which means we'll be looking for help on our social media for um, help with deciding which colours we're going to lose and which colours you'd like to see. So we definitely need some help with that. Right, I told you she wouldn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, right, Char Wheeler says, how did it feel to see the dragons when you first walked into the room? I think I touched on that a little bit earlier, didn't I? But um, when you're outside the door, it's a bit of a fight or flight feeling yeah. and you think I, I could I can't, see that I can't, a little bit I when can't. I watched it back because obviously we can't see you but when I watched you back when you were like calling the lift yeah that I could the see stern face thing. and it's you know and it's like well, this is it this is finally your moment and you've practiced and practiced and practiced but you don't, just don't know whether those nerves are just gonna you know whether your mind's going to go blank and and when that happens, that's like game over. So obviously that didn't happen. I got through it. It's like, get through it, get through it, get through it. Um, and I thought getting to the questions was going to be my breather. Yeah. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> that was actually even more difficult than the pitch itself. So, uh, so yeah, it's it, a little bit of trepidation, but also a, a feeling of this is my opportunity and this is my time. So I'm taking it. <laughs> and take it, you did. <laughs> right, let's have a little look. So, um, first time mum is asking, is it going to be possible to buy Easy Tots in big retailers in the future? What do we think, Sarah? <laughs> well, let's get some phone calls made, hey? Let's see Definitely. what we can get started. Which retailers would you like to see this in? There's a question back to you guys. Which retailers would you like to see this in? We'll get that little black book open. We'll go and force <laughs> Tuka's little black book open and we can see what we, where we can get. Yes, fingers crossed, guys. It's not luck. It's not luck. <laughs> so, uh, right, Mini Meals, Mini Mouths asking, how did you start the business? Um, I started the business as a sideline business mm -hmm. um, by selling products on Amazon. I did a course on um, how to sell on Amazon, how to white label products, and I thought I'd try it out as a little bit of a sideline. So it kind of wet my appetite a bit to products. Um, but when Kira, my, my daughter, started to wean, came across the common problem. We were doing baby lab weaning. And in the UK at the time, there was no complete solution. So I saw a gap in the market mm -hmm. and I just decided I'm going to go for this. Um, you know, I, I found, found a factory. I, I found a, a factory that would do the design for me. We got our prototypes and I got a product launched within eight, eight or nine months. And then after that, the momentum, uh, it, it just snowballed really, really quickly. And I thought, I, you know, I, I can't be a managing director to this company and give yeah. this the attention it needs to take it to its next level. So I took the difficult decision to, to leave one behind so it could focus on, on easy tots. And it's certainly paid off. <laughs> right, I've got one last question for yep. you. So Laura McCarthy is asking, how do you go about setting up an Amazon account and getting such good sales? Oh, okay. Um, well, it's very easy to get an Amazon account, <laughs> yep. but it's not as easy to um, to get the sales that, that you, you'd like, ideally. I think the thing about Amazon is all about visibility. And if your product isn't going to be seen by anyone, no one's going to buy it. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, there is 
a, a heavy element on, on marketing spend that you need to, to put into um, budgeting to making sure that your product moves from page dot 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 further up the rankings where people will actually scroll through um, and that, that will involve um, ensuring that you've got consistent sales which would need to send um, directed traffic to. Um, other than that, you know, Amazon is, a, is an incredible place to, to sell your products, um, but I would explore other avenues as well, your yeah. direct avenues. I think the thing is, people think Amazon's all about selling, mm -hmm. and it's not, it's about buying. Yeah. You have to make people want to buy, buy your products. Exactly. You've got to create the demand yeah. to pull it through Amazon. Amazon's just the selling vehicle. Yeah. It's like any other business, and I, I think a lot of people think it's easy. They think, oh, you just have an idea yeah. and you just list it on Amazon. It on Amazon, yeah. It's not. It's yeah. all the hours and yeah. hours of work. It's and it's an ever-moving feat as well. So, um, so yeah, I, I strongly advise anyone who's got something good to sell, definitely put it on Amazon, but don't put all your eggs in one basket. And uh, so, Amazon Europe, Amazon America, tell everybody where we're at with all of that. Um, so thanks to you, Sarah, we've been um, offered some uh, warehouse space in the USA. We've got a fair bit of it to go around, so, yeah, you know, it's we, amazing. And it's got a little corner of the warehouse now <laughs> in our Crafters Companion warehouse in the US. So that's enabled us to get our first batch of stock over to the USA, and we've launched on Amazon in the USA, and um, that's gathering momentum really well. What's important is we need to get our new lines over there next, so mm. we need to get the Easy Mac Mini Max and our Unicorn Collection over there as well, because we know that they sell so well in the UK and they must also sell so well in the US. Oh yes, I have to say the, the unicorn is a favourite of my little nieces. Oh she yeah, it. it's our best seller at the moment. <laughs> brilliant. Well, hey, listen, if anybody else has any other questions at any point, this has been brilliant. We could do, we could make <laughs> this a regular <laughs> thing, couldn't we? Sit and oh, chat that would be fabulous. Next time we'll have to have a gin. Yes, a gin, gin o'clock. <laughs> right, guys, so this is the end of our big meet. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope we've answered your questions and we'll see you soon.